Next up, uh, we have Joya Fonda. Joya is an artist who uses many different media. You never quite know what she's going to do, but it's always, always really colorful. Uh, she teaches drawing and painting courses at Sacramento City College and regularly share, finds ways to share her art with the public, maybe through a traditional art show in a gallery or by helping to plan a parade or perhaps through a public art piece in a state building. Uh, let's see what she's doing these days. Joya, are you here? I'm here. Hi, Joya. Hi. <laughs> it's been a while. Yep. My hair keeps disappearing into my back. Oh, my, yeah. <laughs> say, I'm, I'm, I'm pretending to be at my studio. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're pulling it off. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with the one that always fascinates me is what influences or inspires your work? Oh, gosh. Um, I just look at a lot of art all the time. Um, you know, I'm always, right now I'm back to teaching. And so I'm always looking for images to explain a certain concept to students. And so I'm just, you know, always delving into art history and contemporary art and and discovering new things myself. Um, and, you know, any research I'm doing for any of the projects I'm working on. Um, recently, I was working on a project and I uh, revisited a French artist named uh, Augusta Herbin. And I'm, I'm just into it right now. It's, it's mostly triangles and half circles, but, um, and a lot of orange. So I don't know, it, it changes by the minute. Mm -hmm. um. Well, we, we spoke at length that when I interviewed you. Yes. And one of, uh, I'm still taking, and Judith shares this with you, that the, the bike lane finds. Yeah, I was thinking, Judith, I, so much of what she said resonated with me that I'm like, oh, I don't, they don't even need to talk to me because she already said all the things I was going to say, um, which is great. I think that we, we share that. Um, yeah, I'm not riding my bike because I'm not going anywhere uh, as much. Of course, the smoke as well. But I... But like Judith, I go on a walk every day, at least when the air is breathable. And um, I've been taking a lot of pictures while I'm walking and I've got a whole pile of stuff that I picked up off the ground. And um, for the past couple of years, I've been really interested in collecting uh, lost pet flyers. So I'm, uh, I've got a, quite, a, quite a stack of those going and my neighborhood is, I always, I, I get a new, I get rewarded with a new flyer almost every time I go out. Um, I do wait a few weeks before I take it off the telephone pole, but, um, but that keeps me, you know, walking around checking on the progress. Like, is it still there? It's a risk, you know? Mm -hmm. um, well, when we, since we're kind of walking into that about your artistic process, why don't you talk a little bit about your artistic process? Oh gosh. Well, it's, I can, I can assure you that it's not linear. Um, there's a lot of play involved and a lot of experimentation and a lot of research and dead ends. And, um, I, you know, the, the picture behind me is what my studio looks like in this moment. And, um, it's a mess. It's a real big mess. And I know that that doesn't look like a workable space for a lot of people, but to me, it's kind of the the ads where they used to, you know, the Reese's ads where the guy used to bump in, you know, the chocolate guy would bump into the guy with the peanut butter jar and make a discovery. I feel like that's um, kind of a working principle in my space and in my life is to just let weird things rub up against each other and see what happens. And if everything's put away, I don't know how those unlikely juxtapositions would occur. So uh, that's, that's part of my recipe, I think, is to just... Um, shuffle and pile things next to each other and let them slide onto each other and see what talks. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things you said in that earlier conversation um, was the way you leave notes to yourself. I do. I've got like, this is my, I'm sitting in front of this computer a lot while I teach. And this is, you know, just the notes from today. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't remember the term for computers like REM or, or, you know, what memory you use and then the memory that you store stuff in, but I'm short on both. And so my, um, my coping skill is just to write stuff down and rediscover it later on. And um, so, yeah, there's, I've got a sketchbook at hand, almost every direction. I carry one around all the time. And then I have these, these pieces of paper everywhere. So that way I don't, it stresses me out when I think I'm going to forget something. 
Like right now it's terrible when I drive across town, I hear something on the radio and I have to like say it to myself a hundred times before I get home so I can remember it because I can't write it down while I'm driving. I hate that. So. <laughs> um, talk about your typical day or a typical day. Okay. Well, well, right now it's not good. Right now, typical day is um, I just get a few minutes to to wake up and and clean myself up enough to be on a screen like this and drink tea and feed the cats and maybe water the yard. And then I spend a lot of time at my computer right now trying to teach people how to make art from this kind of format. So that is a new thing for me and I'm very challenged by it. I feel creative all day long. I'm problem solving all day long. It's a little bit miserable, but also a little bit enthralling. And um, I so badly just wanna just go, go to someone's house and just show them how to draw or paint or whatever, but I, I can't do that. Um, when I go to my studio right now, my studio has become my default demo space. And so I'm, the, I'm spending time making little weird paintings of like, here's how to do this, here's how to draw that. And um, that's very, you know, that's now invaded my studio, like my, this, my work life has now invaded my home life and my studio life. And it's, there's, there's, um, you know, sometimes I say I'm going to my studio to film a video and then I end up kind of screwing around with something else over there. Or I say I'm going to go and work on something and I end up filming a video. So everything's kind of, it's entropy right now. It's all the same, maybe. So what do you do to keep motivated? Uh, well, you know, if you catch me when I'm not in motion, then I think like, oh, it, it might sound like I'm really having a horrible time. But as soon as I start doing anything, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Like, uh, so just getting my hands and materials right away, that, that does something for me. Um, you know, when the students turn in work, that motivates me because then I can see if it's working or not. So that helps. Even just like writing a new handout and making something better and proving, you know, what I've already said before, that helps. So motivation hasn't really, I don't know if that's been the problem. I also have a lot of pressure and stress right now. There's a lot of projects going on. So I'm working on art, but it's not like my normal art. So right now working on art means sorting out insurance and filling out forms. But the art part will come soon, but it hasn't been here for a while. Um, that's, that's what my practice is right now. That's sort of terrible, like not terribly inspiring for open studios, but, but it's true. I mean, sometimes an artist's job is to just like answer emails for a while. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to imagine with, um, with the teaching, because I'm assuming you're doing um, distance learning. Yeah, I'm trying to teach college level painting, drawing, and design through. Yeah, how, how does that impact your, your work? Well, um, it's kind of a, a bit of an existential crisis, but um, I, cause it's hard. It, it's, it's cause I really love doing what I do. I love teaching and I love teaching people how to do this stuff. And I really don't like doing it this way, but I'm trying to find joy in it. How does it affect my work? I feel like my work before the pandemic hit, I was on this, like going to make all these paintings about this crazy quilt I found. And I was really excited about it. And I was excited about the ideas I was having around that. And now those ideas maybe feel less relevant to me. Like I might have to pick it up later on. And now I feel like I'm, wanting to make all these paintings about this experience that I'm living right now, kind of stuck in this place. And that's, I haven't done that yet because I've got these public art projects I'm working on, but I draw a lot while I'm on Zoom and I've sketched out some ideas about just kind of being stuck here. And um, I have some painting ideas, but I, I, don't, I don't know if they're gonna happen or not, or if they're even good ideas, or if after 2020 is over, if anyone wants to, see that at that I mean I think we'll all be sick of 2020 by the time it's done but like I look at Bonard a lot and he had like a you know a lot of home-based paintings kind of you know I think the the girlfriend was kind of a sickly person and it's a lot of interior sort of people just looking for a lot of cat cats in and out of the picture so sometimes I just pretend like I'm in a Bonard painting but it's like a apocalyptic Bonard I don't, I don't know if that helps well, 
let's let's look beyond the pandemic. Yeah. And post pandemic, what would you like to see in the art world, both locally and beyond? Well, I've been following some some different interest, interesting people on Instagram, or you know, I'm interested in what's going on in New York because I think a lot of stuff is close. I can't. I'm so ready to get out of town and travel and do something, but of course, you can't go anywhere. And if I did go somewhere, everything would be closed. So. But I am interested in like what will be left when I get to visit these places, like what what will remain and and then the changes that people are asking museums to make, I think are really positive. So I'm very excited about that. And, um, you know, in terms of, you know, I think that there needs to be like a giant change in programming so that it can be more, you know, inclusive. And, and that's been the case for a long time. And there's museums that have moved towards that. But I think that they they kind of have to now. So that might be kind of interesting. I think that the idea that art fairs and, and this kind of really commercially focused all about sales part of the world, and I don't participate in that anyway, so it's not a big deal, but that's kind of probably die and that's maybe not a bad thing. Um, Jerry Saltz has been saying a lot of stuff about like what you're doing right now is art in the future, like what like small groups of people doing their thing and, and still doing it throughout the pandemic. And so I think that's a good voice to listen to of like, you know, this has never been about anything except artists making art. So just artists have to make art. And um, so, you know, I see that happening and I'm excited about, you know, maybe maybe it's gonna be smaller scale. Maybe there won't be as much art with a capital A and there'll be a lot more art with a small A. And maybe it will be more about telling each other's stories instead of trying to sell paintings or, or whatever we're trying to sell. I think also there was like this moment where maybe some of this technology-based virtual stuff was going to take off, and I, you know, I tried like to go on this art show and on Second Life, and it was the whole thing was just such a disaster. Like just logging into Second Life was such a weird experience for me. So I don't know. I don't think we're there yet, and I think people are hungry for like less of this and more of like stuff in front of them. So um, I'm hoping that there'll be like a, a renewed interest in visiting your local art establishment and and appreciating you know the vernacular art and design things that happen every day like protest signs or yeah you know, I walk around my neighborhood a lot and I really like the way people modify the mailboxes so that they can still have their violent dog but it won't kill the mailman mm -hmm. so like mailbox modifications have become my new sculpture to enjoy I don't know yeah are you Judith mentioned that um she has a, a group, online group, that they do art challenges. Is anything like that in your, in your world or? You know, I always bookmark stuff and say that I'm interested in that, and I am, I truly am, but I just have not had time. Like, I am so busy. I've never been, I feel like maybe I've never been so busy before because everything takes longer to do and you have to do everything yourself right now. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think that that stuff is interesting to me. There's like a, a Facebook group that I follow that puts up a different post every day and I really enjoy it. It's like poetry and it's about nothing and I love it. And I really want to do their assignments, but I can't even find the 10 minutes a day to like take a picture of my foot or whatever it is they want me to post. I can't, I can't, I can't, but I enjoy everybody else's foot pictures that day. <laughs> um, how can uh, people contact you if they're interested in your art or? Oh gosh, I'm very easy to find except I think that my Instagram handle in the catalog is wrong. It's like, it should be Joya underscore Fonda. I don't think I, and I think in the catalog, it just says Joya Fonda all blurred together, but I don't think there's a lot of other Joyas or Joya Fonda. So I think you can figure it out. Um, so Instagram, you just have to spell my name right, which is a challenge. So I'm going to spell it for you. It's G-I-O-I-A underscore F-O-N-D-A. I'm also on Facebook as Joya artist among other things there's a page and I'll be um, live casting or whatever we call this um, on Instagram one day and Facebook on the other day I guess I'll decide right now that I'll do Facebook on Saturday and Instagram on Sunday I got to write that down so I remember what I said <laughs> Facebook on Facebook on Saturday is that what I said Fe Facebook yep. on Saturday Instagram on Sunday I don't know how to do either but I'll figure it out by then and um, I'm not sure what it's going to look like, but I'm, you know what? It's forcing me to be in my studio for eight hours this weekend. And that's pretty, I'm looking forward to that. That's like, that'll be fun. Even if no one tunes in, but if you tune in, I think it'll be more fun. I think you'll have a lot of people tuning in. Okay. That'd be great.
Thank yes. you for your time today. Well, thank you. It was good seeing you again. All right. Bye. Okay. Have a great night. Take care. Yes.